Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Hope you're all doing good today. I know I am good and I'm looking forward to what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna cast some colored pencils. Uh, this is something, we haven't done this for a while. I think we did do it once on the stream many years ago probably, uh, but I thought it was time. We were kind of talking about it, uh, I think on the last stream. And so we're gonna do that. So let's switch views and I'll show you what I have going on here. Taking these guys out of my oven. So you didn't see this one yet, did you? Woo, we got all kinds of stuff going on there. And then this is the one in the thumbnail. So I thought we'd do a, like a, a lot of people call it like a bias cut. Um, it's gonna be kind of a, a craziness going on in this one. Let me get this thing fixed a little bit there. Um, so <clears throat> we got, but when we cut these things, let's see, it's gonna be, they're gonna be cut this way. So you'll have diagonal pencils going on. So that should be kind of fun. I've never done that before, ever. And then in this one, we got a couple things going on. We got some vertical ones. I think Casey does it this way in like the larger blocks. So I thought we'd try some of that. And then I just threw some cutoffs in these two. And by the time I got to this one, I was so sick of cutting pencils. <laughs> I was like, we're gonna make them long and just do a straight one. So it should be kind of fun. I'm excited about it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talking different questions going on um, about ovens and heat and pencils and all this stuff. So let's talk about this. Now, I'm not gonna say that I have extreme you know, knowledge about how this works. Uh, I've, I've done this a few times. I haven't gotten particularly bad results. Um, the one thing is colored pencil blanks are kind of tough to turn. All right, so you know, there's there's, minimal amount of resin going on you're not fully encapsulating them and then on top of it the pencils can be difficult depending um, and so i'm using round ones i do think that the i, I think they're hexagons or octagons the the kind of the ones that, that are like i think they're hexagons i think those are a little bit easier to cast and turn um, they seem to stick better together i think that's what casey uses also casey martin um, i didn't find them though. So um, these are the ones that I had on hand. I do have links down in the show notes to the Jake Blanks molds, both of them that I'm using, uh, or I don't know if they're both, but it takes you to the page where, where his molds are. So um, these things I think are probably gonna be one of your best bets for this stuff. They're very deep. I really like these ones. Um, so both the block mold and the single ones um, are available on his website and they're very good molds. They're definitely my favorite silicone molds to use. I also have a link to some hexagon colored pencils like bulk that I think are actually a little bit cheaper than the ones that I bought. So um, that's down in the show notes. And then also I have a link to liquid diamonds, which is what we're gonna use today. I think we could probably get away with using Alumalite Clear Slow, but um, Alumalite Clear Slow was developed for larger pores, number one. I, it'll work, it'll cure, but I think that we're better off using a slower setting resin and, and an, an epoxy is a good choice for this. So we have a lot of time, it's gonna be you know open for longer, so it'll flow in and around the pencils as good as it can. And I think it's, you know, it'll get also give us lots of time to, to you know, have, you know, open time. Um, so we're not like trying to rush stuff. So it should be pretty fun today. So I'm excited about this. Now, a lot of people were talking about stabilizing. I don't think I would recommend stabilizing colored pencils. I think it's gonna change the color, number one and um, you also have issues with the, the heat. So, you know, my oven is at about a 150. Um, that's fine. Um, if you start moving up to, and somebody mentioned, they, they said something about 250 degrees with cactus juice, that is not the, the right number. Um, if you're curing cactus juice, um, you don't wanna be above 200. Um, I stay between 180 and 200. That's where you wanna be for curing cactus juice. For getting moisture out of wood and stuff like that, you don't really need to be too much higher than about 220. Um, 250 is a little bit on the extreme edge. Um, you kind of want to play a game. You want to be above 212 in general for if you're, you know, for normal uh, drying out of like wood and stuff like that. Um, it's better to be above 212 because that's when the moisture turns to vapor. All right, so it'll get that moisture out a little bit quicker. Um, for colored pencils, though, I've already run into this problem. I've tried doing it at 220 or so and what ends up happening is the 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 outer colors can kind of bleed and so can the pencil lead 
on the inside and so it's it's a mess you don't want to be going too high with the temperature however you do want to get moisture out especially if you're in a, an area that has some humidity we don't have a lot here in nevada however if i don't um, put these in the oven for uh, you know a little while i would say a few hours um, at you know around 150 if i don't do that in my shop you're going to get air bubbles coming out of the pencils um, what ends up happening is that resin is going to heat it up um, even if you don't get like a bad reaction what what happens with um, you know epoxies and things like that um, the resin is heating up and it's converting any moisture that's in the pencils or, or in wood in general into a vapor and even if you've pressurized it it's not going to get the bubbles out they're going to stay there so um, you always want to try and dry these things out a little bit it shouldn't take that much for most people but if you're in you know a very high humidity area you're going to want to leave these things in the oven for quite a while and make sure that they're you know bone dry all right so we got all those things out of the way let me stop who is here first let's see mike McEwen and dominic too and lelia sweet ah doug's here how's it going oh man i can't wait to see that video that you just put out doug that uh it, it was like a bowl with like a, a mixed bunch of stuff that thing looked awesome i i can't wait to see that let's see larry's here Vinny's here sweet i need to do an updated stabilizing video um wood stabilizing with cactus juice video and Eric's here because my, my the steps are right for the ones that I have up there. But those things like I made those videos, I don't know how many years ago at this point. And it was right when I got started with that stuff, but there was no information. So it was the best available on the Internet at that time. But there are some things that I, I would change. Most of them, you know, like I said, all the steps and the way that I do things are pretty much the right way in those videos. What's different is you really want to make sure that you're getting the wood or whatever you're stabilizing completely dry, like zero percent because um, it can wear on your your uh, vacuum pump um, if you got moisture getting sucked into your vacuum pump it can like rust and corrode that thing on the inside and seize it up so you want to you want to make sure that it's totally bone dry um, and then the other thing is like the like the vacuum step and and the the soaking steps and like all the little different steps of things i do for a little bit longer now so i need to update those videos let's see here I'm just scrolling down, seeing if I'm missing anything. Oh, that's where I started. Okay, so Kim's here. Yak, how's it going? <clears throat> Billy Burt's here. How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Anita. Anita is asking, does liquid diamonds have an odor? The, the part B has a fairly strong odor um, but it's not it's not that bad i don't know i don't like the smell of epoxies in general i can i can tell um, i prefer the smell of alumilite clear um, so it can be a little bit uh, smellier than than like what for me some of this stuff is like personal preference i think but um, epoxies are generally a little bit smellier i find than than urethanes um, however, it doesn't really matter. One, one thing I want to make sure, it doesn't really matter if it smells or not. You don't want to be breathing the fumes. Um, you know, even with a low smell, um, the fumes are still, you know, toxic. You want to be in a, a or not toxic, you know, that, that, may, that makes it sound like super dangerous. But you don't want to be exposed to these things and breathing them in. Um, you want to clear out that air. Um, so I guess kind of, it's kind of toxic. Um, it's not that bad, though. There are definitely other epoxies that are way worse um, than liquid diamonds but you don't want to be huffing this stuff like you don't want to be in a in a really small enclosed kind of space with the resin right in your in front of your face it's not going to smell particularly good number one and like i said it's the 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 fumes can cause issues um, respiratory issues and you can also develop a sensitivity to resins which will kind of basically give you an allergy to them which is not good so you know if you're stuck in a place that doesn't have good ventilation where you can't like crack a window turn fans on and, and get fresh air in and recycle all that stuff then definitely wear a respirator all right other than that it's not too bad though it's uh, liquid diamonds i would say on on most of the scales of resin smelly smelly resins it's on the lower end but it is a little bit stronger scent to, at least to my my nose um, than alumilite clear uh, and clear slow 
Welsh Piper, 11 p.m. Oh, I'm glad you made it. It, it is kind of getting late. I appreciate you. You join in the fun. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, you just had to rebuild your vacuum pump. That's yeah, yeah. And you definitely don't want to suck up um, um, juice. Now, so that's another thing that I found out. If you constantly fill your your chamber like way up. Now, you I think you use the bigger ones, but if your if your resin is getting close to wherever the vacuum inlet is it can suck some small particles in and get it all the way into your thing so you don't want to be overfilling especially if you're using the turn text chambers um, give yourself a good four to five inches um, don't load it all the way to the top um, you know pour it up there so yeah william i do have the aluminum honeycomb it's on my website Okay, so I think we're probably about about ready to go here. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's let's get rolling. So again, we're going to be using a uh, or not a <laughs> liquid diamonds, and I have a, a link to that where you can get it at, at Turner's Warehouse as well in the in the show notes. All the links are there. So we got our liquid diamonds. It's an epoxy two to one mix ratio. I recommend doing it by weight. This is a, we a weird resin where you can actually do it by weight or volume technically, but weight is gonna give you a, a more accurate measurement. If you don't have a scale, you can do it two to one by volume. Um, but if you got a scale, pull it out and it's you're gonna get better results, I think. So two to one, uh, it's got about a 40 minute working time somewhere around there at like a room temperature of 70, 72 degrees in that, in that general vicinity. And so it's a pretty good one. It's a, a thin viscosity resin also. Uh, so compared to, I like to use Amazing Clearcast Plus, you know, for certain things. Um, but the problem is this stuff is a little bit more thick. I mean, it's kind of more, you know, you can kind of see it. It just doesn't, it's not like flopping around in the, in the jug. Whereas this stuff moves around a little bit. Well, the part A is not as, as thin, but this stuff is like water thin, the, the hardener. And so when you mix the hardener and the, the resin on liquid diamonds, it's a very thin, I, I would say very similar to Alumilite Clear Slow. Uh, clear, amazing Clearcast and Clearcast Plus and a lot of your bar top epoxies are pretty thick and I wouldn't really recommend using those for this type of project. Um, I think you can get away with Alumilite Clear. Um, that will work, but you're going to be running up against the clock a little bit more. So this is probably one of your best bets, um, I think, for this type of a project. And it's because you want to have, you know, you want to be able to, to let the resin flow in and around all the pencils as much as possible. All right. So we got all that going on. Steve's here. What's up? Frank's here. Um, so Frank and uh, let's see who else is in. Um, I'm not sure exactly who all is. Which is the best resin. So Welsh Piper's asking for, for making rod stock. And I really don't know. I've never made a uh, tobacco pipe stem type thing. I really, I think anything will work, probably. You know, my favorite is Lumalite Clear Slow for most things, but you know, Liquid Diamonds is a good resin. I mean, Total Boat, I've never used it before, but I, I think Total Boat works fine. What I recommend is I would probably try a couple different things out. That's what, I, you know, if you're not entirely certain for your specific application then try a few of the small sizes of resin different resins out that and i would recommend don't buy some random thing that you've never heard of use things that other people use and you know show you how to use where there's going to be some support a little bit um if you have questions about certain things um but it you know i, I just I, it's it's and i'd also recommend using a company where there's a company to contact or somebody that you can you know actually contact that works there if you have questions but the the tough thing is i don't know exactly what the application how that's going to all work so i can't really recommend just based on you know what the final product is especially if i don't make them all right so 427 
Um, I do kind of cover some things to think about if you're trying to choose a resin in my ebook as well. Um, so that might be something worth, you know, looking into. Um, covering different, you know, things that can kind of pop up. Because in, in most cases, I would say 80% of things that people make, you could use any resin out there, period. Um, however, some may work a little bit better than others. And in some cases, you have to get a very specific resin um, for, for, you know, specific uses. But in general, you can usually get away with, you know, whatever. Any resin will work in most cases for most projects. Okay, so we're writing down some notes here. Colored pencils. Number one, we're going to do the, the five slots. And I think that each one of those slots holds about if there was nothing in there, um, those, those things would I, would, I would mix up about 70 to 75 grams of resin. I don't think we're going to need that for, for these because it's full of pencils, you know. But I am going to mix up a little extra. And I think we're going to, I could, te technically I could probably mix up everything all at once, which I think, I, I think I'm going to do that. So we're going to mix up, let's see. So I'm going to estimate for this first one with the flat five slot mold, you know, like that, that had a bunch of different pencils in it. I think we're going to use, I'm just going to estimate that maybe we need, I don't know, 300 grams of resin. That's probably way over. I don't, really mind if I'm overshooting some of this we can pull out a different mold and we got our happy fun cup we can fill the happy fun cup you know um, and then for number two um, that thing would hold about 540 grams it, it's actually quite crazy you know you look at these molds and they're like full and it's actually kind of nuts how much resin will still go into these things <laughs> how much it'll hold but I think that we can easily drop that down to half you know so three slots let's just let's just mix up i'm going to call that one the block number two uh, let's just mix up 500 grams of resin is that going to work no not, that's not a very good number two to one ra ratio so it, it kind of makes sense to do something divisible by three so Okay. If I have to, we can mix up some more. That's the nice thing about using a slower setting resin also. So I'm going to mix up 450 grams total. And this is going to, this, I'm hoping this will cover both these projects, both, the, both the molds. And so what that is, is it's going to be 150 grams and 300 grams. All right. So two to one mix ratio. All right. So that's, that's all we got there. I'm going to go to the double cam for a little bit here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. In fact, I might even just, let, what does the other one look like? Let's see, let's do the Canon. I don't know. I'm just, we're going to leave it there for, for a sec and then I'll switch back to, is that cured? Okay. Uh, once, we, once we start kind of mixing things up. So five, 450 grams, um, I can use a, uh, a quart mixing cup for that. This one looks cleanish. I'm just going to go scrape this cup out real quick. Now, one question I get quite often about silicone molds is do you have to use or uh, variants of this question, do you have to use mold release on them? And does, you know, so-and-so mold release work with them? And so first thing I'm going to say is any mold release is going to work with a silicone mold for any silicone mold. Second off, you don't necessarily need to. I, I have not used uh, a mold release on these. So you don't really need to. What a mold release can do, though, is prolong the life a little bit. Um, but I really didn't want to have mold release all over these things when I'm shoving pencils in there. So that's one of the reasons not to, possibly. The fun cup needs more resin. I know it does. 
Yeah, two to one by weight or volume, either way. Um, this is one of, so, and I wanna, I wanna stop and make sure that everybody understands, most resins are either gonna be mixed by volume or mixed by weight, like 99% of them. So you cannot just choose which one you want with, with a Lumalite Clear Slow. You have to use a scale with a Lumalite Clear Slow. Um, for Amazing Clearcast, which is another Alumalite product, Total Boat, I think, is another one. Um, they need, you have to do it by volume. So you would use a, a mixing cup and put, you know, equal parts or two to one or whatever, but you're doing it by a volumetric measurement, not weight. With Liquid Diamonds, this is one of the only ones on the planet that I know of. You can literally choose. However, I would recommend, and it's the same ratio, it's two to one. Um, but I would recommend doing it by weight because it's more accurate. You can get exact measurements. Um, I, I find that, you know, going to a, a arbitrary line in a cup, not as accurate as, uh, as weight. Okay, so, but uh, just make sure, and this is what I always recommend, and I actually just screwed this up with, it wasn't resin, but with silicone. Make sure to read the, the bottle or the instructions and just make sure that you're doing it right because a lot of people just kind of assume, oh, you know, it's an Alumalite product, so I have to do it by weight because Zach did it by weight and he's using Alumalite. What the problem is, though, Alumalite has 20 different resins, um, you know, formulas, and all of them are, you know, each of them is going to be different. So make sure that when you get your, your jugs, you know, whatever it is, read, read on the, the thing, you know, what it says, what the instructions are. Okay, so zeroing that out, we're going to go with 150 grams of the Part B and 300 grams of the Part A. So let's get overhead here. That's really zoomed in. Boom. Don't need to be that far out. You can do total boat either way too, huh? Huh. Yeah, well, it's, oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's two to one not 45 to 100 is not liquid what li liquid diamonds is two to one it's literally a two to one ratio not 45 to 100 all right so 300 of the part a Close enough. Whoa. Zero that guy out. And sometimes the hardener one gets a little bit crusty. <clears throat> it's a little sticky. Okay, so and then 150 of this part B here. And I like to just sneak up on the last bit. It's just so much easier than trying to mess around with a big jug of it. There we go, 150. On the dot. So I'm just going with clear on these things. Um, you could add color. I've done like black. That's kind of interesting where you have kind of a little black line between them all. 
Um, you could do like white or any color that you want. Um, I don't know that putting mica powder in would be super awesome. I think you're probably best off going with like a really bold color like black or white. Um, but it doesn't really show up that much. And really, you know, what you're trying to show off is the, the pencils, you know, part. So you can kind of play around with it, but I'm, I've kind of, I personally, I've found that just going clear, <laughs> it's just the easiest way to go. So I just want to make sure. So you're talking about total boat, right? Is 45 to 100? Because liquid diamonds is two to one. I just, I want to make sure that nobody's getting kind of confused by this conversation. But yeah, if it's like, if it says it's 45 to 100, then, you know, you want to, that's what you want to do. You don't want to just kind of thumb it and be like, well, it'll be two to one, <laughs> you know, by the way. Um, make sure that, you know, again, this is why you got to read the directions on every resin. Make sure that you're doing what the manufacturer recommends. Otherwise, because the problem is if you throw off the ratio, then it can, you know, issues can happen with, with things. It could, it could in, in the worst case scenario, it just won't cure. Um, and you can have, you know, like rubbery kind of soft, squishy resin. Or in other cases, you know, other weird things can kind of happen if you throw off the, the ratio. So just make sure you're, you're doing the, what the directions say. And I like to mix epoxies. I just, I find that epoxies require, I don't know. I, I think that they need a little bit more time stirring than urethanes. Lumalite clear slow and clear. I mean, it, it mixes pretty fast. Um, but epoxies, you're just better off, you know, they, they have a more of a tendency, I find, to get little clumps that aren't, mixed up um in the final product and you know we 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 had like we sort of had an issue with one of those easter segments and i think that what it was was there was just a little clump of uncured resin somehow that got in there even though i stirred the heck out of it you know always best to just you know if you got 40 minutes of working time sit there for a few minutes and make sure and make sure you're scraping the bottom of the cup you know and corners or anything like that you're way better off using a smooth cup um, another thing that could have happened is i'm not sure I, I, I may have mixed that for the easter segments in one of these cups and you can see there's like little ridges and things these aren't the worst but there's like little things where you know part a or part b could get kind of trapped in there and there's really no way to scrape it so you know your paint mixing cups they're they're generally going to be dead flat and and, and probably one of your best options for, for mixing resins in. Now, I know that I'm kind of contradicting myself. The thing is, for a lot of the blanks that I make, um, these work, the size work better for me. So that's why I have them. But um, if I could find like a 20 ounce <laughs> mixing cup um, that had no ridges on it, like paint mixing cup that was like this shape, that would be sweet that, that we're not floppy i've seen a few different ones but it's, they're they're either disposable ones which is and more expensive than the solo cups or they're just like so flimsy that they don't really worry like they need to be like the same type of cup like that or you know made out of this but like kind of a in that shape that would be perfect haven't found it yet okay so i think this is pretty good um, another thing that's, that's a good thing to do is to kind of scrape off your mixing stick. I'm going a little overboard with this because we just had a really random weird issue with those Easter segments. So giving it probably more than it needs. Okay, so we got our resin mixed up. And let's see here. I'm going to do 
I'm gonna get this on a, a tray right now. Actually, even going to put the tray on this so it's even easy to get for me to pick up. I can get my fingers under it. That's why I have these like random pieces of HDPE so I can get my fingers under that when I when it's time to pick it up. Now I think I'm going to actually dump this into a smaller cup, a paper one that I can squeeze, and we're going to do a few few rounds of this. But I think it'll be easier to kind of get it where I need it. If I can kind of create a little bit of a spout. Actually, I kind of filled that a little bit too full. I'm gonna dump some out. But see, the paper cups are quite nice when you're dealing with something like this and you just need to, oh, except it's running down the front of it. <laughs> that didn't work so hot. These ones are a lot easier to pour into. And all I'm doing, what I want to do is just kind of fill these little by little and then I'm actually going to Another nice thing about these silicone molds is you can kind of squish them, squeeze them, you know? Um, that way you can kind of get that resin and the pencils kind of to move a little bit, which I think can be really helpful uh, when you're doing something like this. Man, this cup is just not really working too well, so we're just going to... Let it be silly and run down the, the bottom of it. Whoa, <laughs> I missed. So my idea of using the, this paper cup is not really working too hot, but that's okay. I'm going to get myself a new paper cup because I really think that the paper cup thing should have worked. <laughs> like I said it's it's not it's not a bad idea to kind of just move these around make sure that you're getting the resin you know mixed in, in and around now I got to be honest cutting all these little things was kind of a pain I recommend using the bandsaw um, and I also recommend it's very tedious and it's very easy to I don't know for, for your brain to go dead a little bit right and so you're doing kind of repetitive things and it's very small cuts and all this and just make sure you you're really paying attention and, and not trying to grab the little chunks that come off and all that stuff you, you it's, it's it's one of those things that I consider a little bit more on the dangerous side when you're cutting little things um, you know like that and it's repetitive so just you know again if, if you're starting to kind of like your brain is kind of dozing off take a break um, walk away from the machine let let yourself kind of you know re reset a little bit 
because that's when accidents happen. Um, when you're when you kind of lose, you you, you start kind of losing your attention to what you're doing. <laughs> this cup thing did not work very well. That's okay. I should say paper cup thing. So it could get a little messy. Don't worry. A little mess ain't gonna hurt nothing. All right, so let's uh, let's do a little bit more of this. And and again, you know, by kind of moving it around. Now your pencils are, are probably gonna want to float a little bit. That's another thing that I I kind of forgot about. So we may want to kind of put something on them. Uh, these ones are going to be super easy to deal with. These ones don't really seem to be floating a whole lot, but that's not going to be very difficult to, to deal with. What I would recommend is to just put a piece of HDPE on there. All right, is that big enough? That's not big enough. That way it's non-stick. and it'll force it down in there. Now I just kind of dribbled resin all over the place. I think we're I think we're pretty good there. So I think I can even move this over to to here so they don't so these ones don't really go anywhere. I'm just going to what I want to do is just make sure that these things, you know, they should be good. Okay. So we got one down. I kind of made a mess here on the this side. I'm going to kind of try and clean that up just a little bit. <clears throat> and I have... Uh, I'm going to switch to the double cam here. I have my, my P-Town Subby rack. So I'm just going to stick that thing on there. There we go. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to need this little cup or, and all this stuff for the other one. Let's see here. Don't think that's going to fit onto my P Town subby rack. So I think I'm going to. I think we'll just leave it on this. Um, th this is from Jake, from the bigger Jake Blank molds. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave it on that and use my five-gallon pot because I don't think that thing. I'm pretty sure this doesn't fit in a two and a half. Nope. So we'll use my five-gallon pot for that one. But in this case, we're just going to dump. need to mix up a little bit more it's pretty pretty darn close I'm gonna kind of push these guys down in a little bit more do I have any more I don't have any more pencil pieces I do think that this thing should be wider though Okay. Now, once again, I think I'm going to drop a. It's kind of tough because I got these big pieces kind of sticking out right there, but I have a piece of HDPE. 
that should fit pretty good and it just it'll make sure that the pencils don't you know go too far but I think I actually did pretty good. Uh, it's tough. I, I probably could have done a little bit more resin in this. Because when you add the pressure, you might you might end up getting a little bit more. Uh, I think I did pretty good. I think it's because th this this mold is is super deep. You don't really need to fill it to the top. So I think we're actually pretty good on, on the amount of resin. It was like literally perfect. I'm just going to get the last drop out. I think we're going to call it a day. I think we're good. I'm just going to kind of wipe off some of this resin that's leaking out all over the place. This other mold. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the Canon so you can kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to put one in this pot. We're going to go with this one. Perfect fit. And then I have my five gallon on the floor here. So let me switch to the, that's not the right camera. Switch to this camera. Tilt it down a little bit so you can see what's happening here. So this is my five gallon. One of these days I want to get it mounted, but easier said than done sometimes. And then this guy just goes down in here. I like to kind of get my feet around this thing so it doesn't spin too much. Helps to do, you want to, you always want to do two clamps at a time so that it's like even pressure when you're putting the, your lid on. It also can kind of help to to get your feet around. I need to get some, I need to spray some lube on the, the screws on this thing. If your screws are getting a little bit tight, um, let, me, let me pressurize these things real quick before I forget. Um, if your screws are a little bit tight on your lid or after a while, um, I, I recommend hitting it with a little bit of dry lube um, every once in a while. It's a PTFE spray, um, and that'll definitely help out with um, making it easier to kind of lock it down. Didn't even forget to, to pressurize anything. Whew. It's a good day. All right, so we'll screw, zoom that up. So a couple things um, with the pressure pots, make sure you don't overpressurize them. Whatever it says the max is, don't go over that. Mine can handle up to 80 PSI. I go to 70, so that's where those at, are at. Now, um, what I'm going to be doing here, so liquid diamonds, again, you have like a 40 minute working time and then, let me, let me put this down just a little bit. And then um, uh, the, the demold time, which is generally how long you're going to keep it in the pressure pot. I leave it in overnight. Um, it can run up to like eight to 12 hours is probably 
what you're going to be doing. Um, realistically, I'm not even coming to the shop tomorrow. So these things are going to be in the pressure pots like for 24 hours, you know, for a full day or day and a half. Um, but I think, you know, minimum, you, you know, eight, eight to 10 hours, you should be good. So, you know, it's like four in the afternoon. I would leave them in there and then come back the next day and they should be, you know, ready to go. Now, uh, liquid diamonds, because it's an epoxy, it, it cures on an even time scale. So this has a seven day um, cure schedule. I wouldn't mess around with these things like, like you know, turning them for a week. I, I would, you know, generally recommend that. Now I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna cut them up in a few days um, and we're gonna turn one, but you're better off letting it harden, excuse me, fully, um, just, just to make sure. Uh, it's kind of, what, what ends up happening is you, you end up with a very small amount of resin around all these kind of pencils all you know like the joints and so the longer that it has to cure the better off it's going to be uh is there anything else that i was going to men mention i don't think so now turning these things you know you, you got to be a little bit careful with them um, it's not the greatest bond you know these pencils were kind of smooth and all that kind of stuff i didn't clean them off or do anything like that so you want to you know take care take caution when you're turning a blank like this um, you know drill you don't want to overheat it that's another issue that you can have with blanks like this where you know people run into failures where they don't necessarily like they caused the problem um, in some cases um, if you overheat the blank then you're going to weaken that bond between the resin and you know the colored pencils in this case or whatever the material may be um, even more um, it already started as a weak bond and then, you know, when you add a lot of heat to it, when you're drilling it or, or cutting or, or turning even, that can kind of weaken that bond even further and then it causes failures. So make sure to do that. And then, you know, if you're turning a pen, make sure you got to get a really good glue joint on between that, that tube and, and the blank. And one little trick that I always do, and for some reason, I'm going to attribute this uh, to why I, I have success with difficult tricky blanks a lot of times um, I put I squirt a little bit of this super fast thin CA glue inside the tube uh, or inside the hole you know that I drilled in the blank and that way if there's any little you know very fine areas that are, that are not very good bonds or little you know kind of cracks or anything like that between the materials this stuff is going to glue it together from the inside and so that's how I do my gluing. I, I, I douse the inside of the blank hole itself with the thin, and I, and I, but first I, I, I wipe on the thick, um, Starbond's thick, onto the tube itself. Set that aside because it has a longer, a little bit longer open time. Douse the inside of the blank and then put my tube in. And I always have pretty good glue bonds and, you know, whatever. Now, if you're getting perfectly fine glue bonds, then don't worry about changing or anything like that. But just wanted to kind of, you know, share those couple, couple little things, couple little tips and things. All right. So let's see here. Uh, just scrolling up. Sorry, I was kind of going fast and, and kind of not really paying attention to the to the uh, chat because I was focused. I was laser beams. I don't think I'm missing anything. Does anybody have any questions? Let's just go with that. Never trust a clean job. Yeah. Cleaning during that seven day wait? No, I got, all, I got plenty of stuff to do in between. <laughs> I got more than enough. So uh, for anybody that didn't see already, I put a video out on Sunday that I really want you guys to check out if you haven't yet. Um, I have a, a new air filter for my shop and I really like this design. It's, it's something that's on the floor. You don't have to mount it to the ceiling, which is one of the biggest things that I love about it. Um, but you can get it right close to the, the tools. And so my biggest thing is if you've never seen this one before and you're in the market for air filters, I just wanna make sure that people know that this style it's a diff totally different thing than most of the air filters for for workshops it's a different style and it's out there it's available not saying you have to go and buy it but it may be a better option for for your shop so make sure to check that video out share it if you're you know in facebook groups or you're talking to somebody and they're like oh i'm looking for air filters 
you know, share it with them and make sure that they know. It's just when I finally found it, I was I was specifically looking for something like this. Um, and there just weren't any, <laughs> there's nothing like that on the market. And so when I found this, I was like, oh, I got to share this with everybody. Um, and I also have affiliate links. I also get, um, if you guys do decide to buy one, use my link that's in that video. And I actually get a kickback from the company. So I just wanted to kind of share that out there. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool design for an air filter. I, I really like the idea. I've been using it in my shop. And one of the big advantages is it has an available charcoal filter. So it can extract fumes in your shop. So, you know, resin 3D printing, <laughs> like that stuff stinks. Um, you know, your resins, now it's not gonna save you from having to wear a respirator if you don't have good ventilation, but it will knock down the smell in your shop a lot faster because it has that charcoal filter. So. Well, my shop's not clean at all. My, my, you should see my lathe area. <laughs> it's still dust everywhere. I got stuff everywhere. I got buckets on the ground and resin. I don't know. I don't. I just don't think you guys can see all the the dust and dirt on the on the floor. I do like to wipe things off and clean stuff up. My biggest problem is I don't like resin sitting around because I I tend to like lean on things and you know you put something down in it then you touch yourself and then it's all over everywhere. <laughs> I can't stand that. So. Yeah, disorganized. And then this weekend we got a video coming out. It's going to seem like it's it's late and it is kind of late. It's kind of an Easter themed video, but I think you guys are going to really like it. So, um be looking for that video this weekend. Um I don't have anything else. That was that was we did everything kind of all at once on this one, so it happens sometimes. Sometimes I do a quick stream. I mean, it happens. Not very often, but sometimes. Phillips here. Did you did you get to see anything? <laughs> Sorry about that. It was pretty quick. <clears throat> I'm just scrolling up to make sure I didn't miss any questions up above. What happened, Kim? Oh, into your finger. Oh. That's, oh, yeah, heal up quick. That sucks. <laughs> Sorry, I was just, I was just reading the chat. I, I got caught up in everything. Sometimes I sweep sitting down. I like it. Oh, you missed it. Sorry, Philip. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a quick one. I had everything ready and it's just, eh. I could have maybe done one at a time, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah, it's it's so nice if you have good airflow in, in a shop, you know, but I just, I think about like, there, there's a lot of people that do tumblers and they're like, they're like in like a 10 by 10, like bedroom or, you know, whatever, small these small spaces they're sitting at a desk and the resin is like right in their face and they're just they're not protecting themselves and you know that there's no air circulation going on and then you also got to think like it's you know going throughout the house too a lot of times so i i think it's a you know it's it's a good idea to make sure you're protecting yourself with a mask or whatever like that but you know if you can get an air filter in there even better if you can get a window cracked and a fan, you know, best. That way you're not, you know, because the problem is the fumes, even if they're not super smelly, they're still dangerous. You know, if you, even if you can't really smell it, you don't want to be breathing that stuff, especially over longer, long periods of time, like long periods of time, but also over like the long haul repeatedly. You don't want, you don't want to have access or, or being um, exposed like that. <laughs> you set it down. Yeah, I know. Uncured resin everywhere. I got, the, I, like, I have zones where I, I kind of know, like, okay, there's going to be resin here and there. But what I find, man, I will tell you what, these divine pigments, I swear, this stuff is everywhere in my shop. And I don't know, like, like weeks later, like, I, wouldn't, I won't even use them for weeks. And then somehow I touch something and it's like I'm getting it all over everything. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh. So I try to keep things as clean as possible. Oh, 
Oh, it's okay, Mike. I, I, you know, you, you got to go to the grandkids baseball game. <laughs> you can't, you can't watch the, the, the live stream when, when you got things like that going on. All right. So I think we're going to wrap things up. So on Saturday, I'm going to turn one of these guys up. I think I have enough, right? We, yeah, cause I'm going to get six blanks. I should get about six blanks out of that brick and then five. So we got 10, um, you know, one for each of the mystery box people. And so we, I should have, and we're making 11. So I'll turn one of these guys up on Saturday. Hopefully all will go well with that. And then, yeah, it should be fun. So it'll be a pen turning Saturday this, this time. And I, I don't find, I don't get Illumilite dyes all over the place. It's so weird. The, the divine pigment ones everywhere, but um, alum, Illumilite dyes, I don't. I, I still use the old bottles. I think these bottles are cleaner, kind of. But they just don't, I don't know, for some reason it's not, not very messy. Yeah, the divine. Yeah, that's another thing. When I open them, the the things kind of blow up on me a lot of times. It's just killing me. Anyway, anyway, guys. So uh, Saturday is at noon. Uh, that's when we'll do the the pen turning. I'll send out a, a little notice probably on Instagram and Facebook. I forgot to today, but um, hopefully I'll remember on Saturday to remind you guys. But make sure that you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell. That way you get notified when I go live so you don't miss any of those things as well as when I post new videos. So um, be keeping your eyes peeled on Sunday though and, and make sure to check out that air filter video if you haven't yet. Um, I, it's, I think it's a pretty cool product. That's, that's my main focus with that. I think it's something that people need to know about uh, that, that it's, it's available. Uh, my biggest, the thing that really just aggravates me is when I go buy something and then I find out two weeks later there was a better option. That, I mean, there's nothing that's more frustrating than that. So I'm just like, you know, make sure you guys know about this thing and then, you know, compare and contrast the features and see if it works for you. Uh, but anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all joining the fun tonight. And I will see you guys all on Saturday. Again, Saturday's at noon uh, Pacific time. So I'll see you then. We'll turn the pen up.